Hey guys, and welcome to five top tips on building a basic bunker base in Foxhole. Let's begin. Number one, your construction materials and equipment. So in terms of your equipment, you'll need a construction vehicle, a hammer and a shovel. In terms of building materials, you just need basic materials. Here we can see that the construction vehicle is fully filled with basic materials. I'd also recommend to take a rifle with some ammunition, as well as a bandage to heal yourself if you get in trouble, as well as a pair of binoculars and a radio. The binoculars are great for scouting out the area that you wish to build in to see if it's a good area to build in. And the radio is great so you can check your map uh, for enemy presence so that you know um, it is safe to build in the area that you are building in. It's also a good idea guys to carry an extra few rifle clips because you may decide to destroy your blueprint segments with, uh, that you've placed with your shovel in case you don't like the position that you put them in. Number two, placing and digging out the layout of your bunker base. So, what you want to do is you press tab on your character, left mouse click to click the shovel, one to bring the shovel out on your keyboard, then press B on your keyboard to then access the building menu with the shovel. And what you want to do is you want to put down a bunker segment like this, tier one bunker segment. Now, you want to make sure you don't put the bunker segment too close to the road because you need to leave a bit of gap there so you can put the bunker segment bunker base segment um, in. Otherwise, if you put it too close to the road, you won't be able to do that. You've also got to be thinking about vehicles that are going to be driving up to the bunker base and delivering supplies. If it's too close to the road, then you'll be blocking traffic, right? As the trucks will come up and deliver their supplies and be on the road while doing so. So a good place would probably be around about here, this distance away from the road, like so. And then you put, place it down like that and you shovel it once. The reason why you want to shovel it once is because you want to put the layout in first, right? You don't want to complete the segment if you're unhappy with it. So what you do here, you just go along and you would keep doing this one shovel at a time. You've got to wait a couple of seconds for it to allow you to build another one. There you go. And what you want to do is you want to kind of get a two by three segment here uh, for your bunker base. And then what you want to do is this one here will probably be the bunker base segment, right? So now I'll just finish building this. So now that the 2x3 segment is completed, guys, what you want to do is you want to get inside your construction vehicle. And you want to drive it into this middle section here, indicated by my mouse cursor. You don't want to go too close to it, because otherwise you'll be with your CV, otherwise you'll be blocking yourself from building it. So you want to come around about here. That should be good. Now you want to press Control 2 to switch to the construction seat. And then you want to press E to upgrade. And then you want to use your mouse wheel to then turn the bunker base segment the direction that you want. Like so. Then you left click it. And then you right and left mouse click together with your construction vehicle to build the bunker base segment. And this costs 300 BMATs to do so. Right, so now we've completed the bunker base itself. You can jump out of a vehicle and run up to the base and actually press E to use the bunker base and start putting in supplies. However, as this bunker base is tier 1 and the surrounding segments of the bunker base itself is also tier 1, um, it's not a great base to start putting supplies into. First things first is what you want to do is upgrade the outer segments to tier 2. Also, the provisional rifle garrison will set our spawn here and then click that and we'll try and start to upgrade the provisional garrison. Once this has been upgraded all the way up, you can then start activating Foxhole AI around this base within 80 meters. To get rifle garrisons on this base, we need to add the four required garrison modifications. In this instance, they are beds. So what you want to do now is you go into your CV, maybe pull out 400 BMATs and you walk to the base. And then you go to an individual segment like this, press F to up enter the upgrade mode of your hammer, then press E on the segment, and then what you want to do is you want to put down a bed. But we can't do that just yet because you need to upgrade it to tier 2 first. So to upgrade, a, upgrade these segments to tier 2, you click on this, bunker tier 2 segment. Like that, and then you come up to it and then you start hammering away. And you do the same thing on each one of these segments. It's also worth noting, guys, that you can upgrade these segments from not just the inside, but also from the outside, as I'll now quickly show. So go run around to the outside, press space to jump over there and then you can hammer from the outside as well. Number three, activating Rifle Garrison AI on your bunker base. So 
So allow us to get the rifle garrison AI. It says here that we need four garrison modifications, okay? And to do that, we need to build four bunker beds inside the base, which is very easy to do so. So now that we've upgraded it to tier two on the outside, we can then come over to this segment here, press F. Now we have the text icon, which means this segment will be um, the one that we want to upgrade. Press E on it, and then click on the bunk symbol on the top right hand side of building menu over here. Then you just click it and your character will then modify the structure and then boom, there's your bed. And that's one out of four. So then we're going to do that again over here. Place the bed again over here. And one over here. Nice and neat. Okay, so there we go. We've got the four bunker beds now up. We can press the rifle garrison and it should give us in a second. It's a little bit delayed. So don't panic if it says you can't put that, put it in, you can't get the tech in. You've just got to wait a few seconds, maybe a minute or so, and then that will then um, turn from red to white, uh, and allow, meaning that you can then upgrade it. You can see here that even without anyone else being in the area, uh, and since this, this is friendly territory, my provisional rifle garrison is already halfway done, okay? Now, to speed up this process on the provisional garrison and the rifle garrison, the more people that set their spawn here and click this tick icon, so they click they click on the assigned spawn icon and click this, then it will, the faster um, you'll have access to the AI, okay? And also the more supplies as well, I believe, in the base also help contribute to the f how fast the, the thing ticks up. However, if you are building on a front line, um, putting a load of supplies in a very weak base, as I mentioned beforehand, is not a good idea because if that goes down, the enemy reset that bunker base, um, then all those supplies are, are practically lost. Okay, now look. Here we go. It's now said that we now can build the rifle, start taking for the rifle garrison AI, as we now have the four modifications. We can start clicking on that to then upvote that AI. Now, um, we'll be back later on when we this AI has been upgraded, so then we can start building rifle garrison AIs. Number four, building defenses around your bunker base. So, now that you have got your bunker base completed, and even if you haven't got the AI ready to, to, to go just yet, you can build a layout of what you want to upgrade down the line so that you're ready to upgrade and start hammering away as soon as the uh the upgrades the the ai upgrades become available so what i would do is first things first for me personally i would always try and make sure my bunker base is 360 degree coverage so i would want to get my rifle garrisons dotted around in a nice 360 degree coverage of this base so what i would do is i would come over to here i place fairly close to the road about here too far away here like so do that and then in the early stage of the war guys i would build i would build three segments for rifle garrisons and i'll show you what i mean in a second so here this centered one is going to be just another tier two bunker segment but the ones on the end are going to be rifle garrisons which will you know players can get in them can shoot out of them and also it'll be ai which will shoot enemies however to have to upgrade these to rifle garrisons, we obviously first, like I said beforehand, we need the tech. So we need this to go all the way up. And um, also we need it, we need a connecting trench back to the bunker base. So what we do is we press B on our shovel and we would want to choose the trench connector. And then you just want to put it near to where, you know, it's connecting to the base. And you'll see you can build it due to the uh, it turning yellow. And then you just put left, come over here and just left mouse click it and then you can start shoveling. Generally, what I would want to, what I personally would like to do is try and limit the amount of space between these trench connectors. Um, you don't never want to be building long trenches like this, guys, because long trenches are bad for, um, you know, they, they are a double-edged sword, basically, uh, where, you know, if you get in them, great. You know, it's better if it benefits you, but if as soon as enemy gets in them, they can really mess you up and it'll be really painful to get to get rid of them. So the smaller the trenches the uh, the less chance the enemy can utilize them against you you know and also the smaller the trenches are as well the bigger the space you guys can build more rifle garrisons in also gotta be wary of trees as well because like things like obstacle terrain obstacles will impede you from building so you've got to count them into consideration actually in this instance i might want to build across the road over here and if it's too far away from the road i won't be able to build a connector underneath the road so i want to make sure this is a bit closer to the road as possible here so I'll do that there, and then what I'll do now is I'll just get my rifle out, and I'll delete these two segments, and then I'll just add, attach them onto this one here. So we'll go one, two, simple like that, get my shovel out, and then pop the two here. 
like so. Perfect. I can also maybe build a connector on this side as well, which I will do as well. Again, building multiple connectors from the bunker base into your segment line helps because if one gets destroyed, you won't lose the connection throughout your entire uh, segment. Right. And then we'll try and build across the road now. Because obviously we need to try and make sure the defences are covering this side of the base, the west side of our base. Just going to move the truck over here again, out of the way. So that's very simple to do that. So you just come to the other side of the road, guys. And you make sure you try and like like line it up here to where the other box is. Make sure you're not in the way. So about about there's good. As close to the road as you can get it. You you dig that out, and then you just get to get the connector out, and then you just hover it over um, the gap. And there you go. You can build the um, the connector segment like so. Easy peasy. Once you complete this segment, it'll it'll look like it'll disappear. But Rest assured, it is there, and it will connect up your, your defences, as I'll show later on. And then, same thing again, we have this uh, segment over here, so we need to line this one up. If you, ha if you have it at an odd angle, like if I built this here and tried to connect up, it wouldn't work. You have to try and make sure they're kind of pre-leveled up. So about there should be good. Doesn't need to be perfect, but as long as it's kind of in the right area. And there we go, you can build the next connector up here. Perfect. Here we go. And then just build another three along here. And uh, there we go, guys. So as you can see now, we've got good 360 degree coverage once all of these have been dug out and upgraded and we have Rifle Garrison Tech. This should be a nice basic bunker base as you'll have full coverage defending you from every angle from a possible enemy attack. Um, obviously, you would want to build more of these and build out further down the line. Um, but as things stand, for, for, for a basic kind of out outlay, this is pretty, um, pretty damn decent. Okay, so we come to the base here. Oh, it looks like we have Rifle Garrison Tech already uh, upgraded now. Brilliant. So, well, um, I'll just go and demonstrate now. Um, for instance, in this segment, once I dig this out for you. So now we've built the three segment. What you want to do is you want to upgrade this segment here to a Rifle Garrison. But it says you can't build it because you need to have the connection in. However, what we can do is come over here and make and I click on this and put a, a beam into that and upgrade that because we're going to need that upgraded to tier two. The reason why we do this is because rifle garrisons cannot sit next to each other. They need to have something in between them to be able to exist. Um, so what we'll do now is I'll just dig out this connection. Now that I've constructed my first trench, now I should be able to upgrade these segments to rifle garrisons. So I come up to it, press F upgrade mode, press E, and there we go. It's now lit up. You can now build a rifle garrison. So there you go. One there. Just run over to the other side. And we'll build the other one over here. Right. And there we go. And then once you've once you build that, they will only be tier one rifle garrisons. Okay, so you still need to upgrade them further to tier two. Uh, so there we go. The rifle garrison is built, and the AI is on. We can t tell that the AI is on because the flag is quite large. If the flag was quite small, it would mean the AI is offline. Now, generally, when you build a brand new bunker base, the AI won't always be automatically online. But the reason why it is online in this instance is because it is very close to the town of Elksford, which, as you can see here, does have permanent AI on, which then that means that we get permanent AI on on this base. OK, now to get permanent AI on, if you did not have this, you know, building near a town would be you would need to have the small garrison here teched up to tier two. Right now it's tier one. Once it also upgrades to tier two, you can then get in your construction vehicle and then upgrade the, the main core BB segment, because this is still tier one, to tier two. It costs 100 BMATs to upgrade it from tier one to tier two. And then what we want to do, again, to upgrade this to tier two, this rifle garrison, you don't need to wait for this to be upgraded to tier two to do that. You can just come over to this, press E, and there you go, 75 BMATs to build that. And I believe it's 50 for each standard rifle garrison segment. You could upgrade... Um, your core segments if you wanted to to rifle garrisons but I would not advise it because uh, as I've been told uh, building rifle garrison segments onto the core segment so this whole segment here actually weakens its integrity the bigger the bunker base generally is the weaker the integrity as well and weak integrity means it requires a lot more b mats and a lot more hammer hits to repair the structure back up to full health and that's why I like to keep a bunker base nice and small like this without any rifle garrisons on it so that it's easier to repair and um, also for the fact that, you know, for smaller, this is a smaller target for artillery. So artillery in, in Foxhole at the moment has quite a large scatter 
And obviously, the bigger the bunker base is, the more, the, the higher the chances of that artillery landing better shots and, and hitting it, right? The smaller it is, the less likely. So hopefully that makes sense for you. Now we have completed the Rifle Garrison Tier 2 segment. We can get inside it by pressing Q. And we can actually shoot out of it, as you can see here. Uh, we can't shoot to the far left over here because we're blocked by this structure, but that's why we have the other one on the other side, so you've got the 360 degree coverage. What you can do is you can upgrade this segment here to Tier 2, and then add a doorway in, and then a vision slit on this other side so that you, people can come in and shoot from that other side. Okay, now we've built this segment up. We can then now add a door to this. So again, press F, upgrade mode, press E on it, find the door icon, which is here, and there you go. Press left mouse click to, to then start putting a door in. It costs 20 beamers to do so. There we go. So you can get into the bunker, and then you can press F again onto this, onto this base. So again, upgrade mode here. And then what we want to look for is a firing port. And you want to put it on, obviously, the side here. So that's where the enemies are coming from and because you've got the doorway on the other side so you add in the firing port here so that now allows you to shoot out from this bunker from the inside as i now show so now the firing port's there and you can see we can now shoot out of the base from this side beforehand we couldn't do that and then you can also enter the, the rifle garrison again from inside this base and shoot out like so so basically what you want to do then is have this tier two, that tier two, and that replicated along all of these segments, as you can see here. So triple three there, so a, a, a three there, three there, three there, and along there. You can see we got it all the way along, and you want to just replicate that. Obviously, if I did this myself, it would take me forever, but generally what you want to do is obviously have a team of builders to help you achieve this. And it's a lot faster if you've got maybe you know two to three or even four people or even more working on it. It can go quite quickly. But this is just the general principle of what you want to do for a bunker base. So here guys, we have a road connector. So you can see right now, if I press F and E onto this, we can't build the rifle garrison tech just yet. But as soon as I complete this connector here, like so, it disappears, because it's a road connector. And then you go over there, press F and then E, we can now build the rifle garrison on the opposite side. There we go. And you can do exactly the same on the opposite side there as well. So hopefully that makes things a little bit clearer for you guys there. So guys, for further defense, once you've built all these rifle garrisons out to the max distance so they can get AI, uh, active AI on, um, is you probably want to start putting down barbed wire. Now, where would you want to put barbed wire? Uh, you would want to make sure you put the barbed wire just outside of their grenade range throw from, for instance, HE. So what you do is you equip a HE to get an idea of this, and you bring it out, and you right-mouse click. And you can see this is, this is about the distance here that we can lob the grenade on. So if, if we know that, we need to... Make sure to put the wire just a little bit down further here, like so. And now, if I get my grenade out, I cannot get close enough to like to get my HE grenade onto that defensive line, right? So now I know it's it's a good idea to build wire then. So that and then the rifle garrisons will shoot anybody um, from quite far out in daytime. Uh, at nighttime, uh, AI defenses their, their, their range is reduced uh, as they can't see as much. So when it comes to building barbed wire, guys, I wouldn't automatically wrap the entire defensive line in barbed wire which some people seem to do you always want to leave a couple of gaps in there uh, and that and the reason why is so that you can maybe counter-attack an enemy um who might be out lying outside so what i would do is i might leave a tiny gap like this and then i'd put another piece of barbed wire like this on this side this way it kind of makes a maze for your opponent to get through so it's more so it's more likely your opponents are going to take longer to get towards your defenses therefore um, more time your defences have to shoot them. But it also allows you to get outside of your defensive line to attack enemies. Because if you wired all the way around and wired yourself in, then you couldn't potentially quickly go out there and, and stop somebody who's lobbing mortar rounds from you, for instance, on the east side of, of, of your base. So always, when you're trying to build wire, always leave a gap like this and maybe you make a little maze of the way out so that at least you can go out and attack your opponents, uh, but they will have a hard time trying to get into your defensive line. Number five... Supplying your bunker base. So now that you have your bunker base built, and let's just imagine that you've got all the rifle garrisons surrounding the base now as well, uh, you will now want to supply the base. You probably want to supply the base already from the get-go so people can start spawning on it even beforehand. So when you first start supplying the base, you want to be delivering this types of resources here. Ba basic materials so people can keep building and upgrading the defences as well as repairing them if they get under attack. Also, shirts. Soldier supplies so people can spawn into that location when they die. 
Also, some ammunition and some rifles so they can shoot the enemy, as well as some bandages so that they can heal themselves if they get uh, if they start to bleed out on the battlefield. So what you want to do here is you might want to maybe not submit all the BMATs, because obviously if you submit all the BMATs to the base, people will have to manually take them out. So maybe it's not always a good idea to just submit BMATs straight away. Um, but what you can do is you can have some of them in the inventory, and then what you want to do is you right mouse click and then submit all to stockpile bunker base like that. There you go. And then you can see we've got some nice supplies in there. So nice, this is like a base kit, which is perfect for uh, a bunker base. So you've got people who can spawn in, they've got rifles, ammo for the rifles, some, some beamers to repair, and some bandages to heal themselves. So it's perfect. What this lacks, I guess, is maybe some any anti tank capability. So you might want to also supply some sticky bombs. Like these things, so that people can use them on vehicles. Possibly HE grenades as well is good, as well as well as gas grenades. So these are other good things that you might want to bring to a bunker base. Maybe some gas masks and some filters as well. But in terms of like the, the pure base early game, you know, up against just pure infantry and not any armor, this is this is good enough. Also, guys, I want to stress that please don't ever oversupply a new base like this as even though it looks quite strong and healthy, the, the, the main segment is still tier 1. So if enemies come along and start grenading this tier 1 segment, it will die fairly quickly. And then again, you would lose all supplies. So only put in the bare minimum that uh, the base is, needs to survive. So don't, for instance, a brand new base, no more than maybe 100 shirts. Um, new base, maybe no more than 1,000 BMATs in the, in the stockpile at any one time. Um, just to be on the safe side, because the amount of times I've seen uh, new bases... Be pumped full of supplies. I've seen some places go up to 5,000 BMATs with 300 shirts, and then literally half an hour later, or maybe 10 minutes later, the base is destroyed. All that supply is wasted, right? Be better yet is if you want to, you've got lots of materials to, to, to put into this base, just leave them in a, st in, in a storage depot nearby. For instance, here we are. Um, this is where we are with our bunker base at the moment. You've got the storage depot of Brody Town, so you can just put some supplies into there, to be honest, and then whenever you need. Um, to grab those supplies, you can come to the storage depot and collect them. Um, rather than just risk putting everything in the base and losing it all. Because if you lost the base, and you actually kept the supplies in storage, you could make a, maybe make a new BB, um, and then put those new supplies into that one. Or, you know, you could fall back with these supplies into another location, for instance. Also, guys, uh, when it comes to building the defense of your base, you'd want to build towers. I, all, towers are already built in this area, so I didn't really include it in this in, in, in this. Uh, in this video but generally it's always a good idea to get good tower coverage around your bunker base so obviously you know um where enemy presence may may lurk lastly guys i just want to talk about the other type of thing resource you want to deliver to a uh, a bunker base and that is both garrison supplies and bunker supplies bunker supplies are only used up by bunker segments whereas garrison su supplies are used up by everything so you could just deliver garrison supplies which would be fine however what I've been told is that bunker supplies are a little bit more cost efficient because they, they are used to a little bit less um, compared to garrison supplies when it comes to bunker segments. So you could just deliver both, um, a mix and match, but generally, uh, as long as you deliver, you know, a good helping of both to the base, you know, your structure shouldn't decay. If bunker supplies along with garrison supplies only actually stop decay once the small garrison has been upgraded. So you need this double tent icon all the way up. And you can see um, it does take a long time, even if it's friendly territory. So when I talk about friendly territory, you go to the map, right? And you and you just hover over uh, the region with your mouse cursor. And it says starting territory friendly. If you were to zoom out, maybe go south a bit and look down maybe salt farms here, it'll say starting territory neutral and enemy. But this, this affects how quickly um, your base structure gets its upgrade. So if it's friendly territory, it's a lot faster. If it's enemy ter territory, it's a lot slower. And again, as before I said, the more people that submit supplies to it, the more people set this spawn here, the faster um, this will increase. And guys, if you are solo building or you've got a very small crew that is uh, that is building a base and then you are planning on leaving it for a while, maybe in a couple of hours, and it's kind of close to the front line, I would advise against doing that. I would only um, ever advise, you know, if you've got a small crew like that, I'd backline build somewhere safe so it's unlikely... To get harassed by the enemy if you put it on the front line and you build it up for a bit you spent like a couple of hours building it and then you were to leave it because you have you know go to bed or whatever the ai goes offline and then that allows all, all that's really easy for the enemy to do is just rush up to the base because they, 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 they can because no ai is shooting them and they just need to blow up this core segment here 
and then they can just reset it with a CV, and then basically all your work, hard work is completely gone out the window. And just to clarify, guys, when it comes to Tier 1 AI before Tier 2, you need 10 people setting their spawn at this base to keep the AI on. Once you get up to the Tier 2 small garrison, the AI will be permanently on, regardless of how many people set their spawn at the location. So guys, a bit later on now, it's the next day, I've come back to this base. We can see that the, we have the small garrison now available, and now it says on. So we are utilising those bunker supplies. So the, all the garrison supplies have been used up. The bunker supplies are being used very slowly. You hover over and over to this here, and it says, it tells you how many bunker supplies are being used per hour. It says zero supplies per hour, but uh, it's probably something like 0 0.15. It doesn't really show that, but uh, it is using up some supplies, and it is uh, stopping the decay. But it isn't using much at all, as you can see by that. Also, now that the base is tier 2, we can now upgrade this to tier 2, which I'll now show. Now we have 100 B-Mats inside the CV. We just get into the... press Control 2 to get into the construction seat. Turn the crane around so we get the uh, the text pop-up. Press E, and then, again, right and left mouse click together to then build up the bunker base. As you can see here, it's 100 B-Mats to do so. The bunker base is complete. It is now tier 2. And there you go. It's a lot more durable now. It's tier 2 compared to tier 1. So, and there you have it guys, if you want to go on to things like concrete and stuff, that will be on a later video. This is just a basic one to just get up a basic bunker base, so anything else will be in a future video. So, there you go guys, that is the end of the video. If you want to check out any other cool Foxtel tutorial videos, check up here and over here. I also stream every single day, apart from Mondays, on twitch.tv forward slash helping hands. And I'll catch you in the next video guys, take care.